Okay? Think about the, the things you do as spending cognitive calories. How many cognitive calories do you spend on what and why? Are you effective at managing your cognitive calories? Because mental fatigue and neural fatigue is a very real thing. It has an effect on physical fatigue. But how great would it, could it be if we could program our day and our workouts so that we're considering effort and activation of mind? you're coaching your clients and there's behavior change involved, but we really want to focus on movement and how we can engage the brain during movement intentionally with precision. Just like we would an anatomical structure, we can go from local to global, and if it's someone with pain or immobility or lack of stability, we can address that. We should also be able to take that same approach with the brain, but unfortunately we don't have the knowledge or the structure or the strategies to do so. So in order to make that deep transformational change with your clients, and that deep transformational connection that you need to have, we need to understand the brain. So hopefully this starts to create that conversation. So the first thing we need to talk about is the brain is, like I said, complicated. So we need to start with something. We don't want to start with just, you know, how does the brain work? That, that could be a whole other set of classes, right? We're going to start by defining cognition. Has everyone heard the word cognition? So what the heck is it? We hear about cognition. But cognition are all the mental processes and executive functions that include things like working memory, decision making, judgment, planning, organization. It includes things like creativity and social skills, which I really lack. Um, but you really want to be able to understand cognition because it's basically how we interact with others and the world around us. When you ever have a problem thinking, it could be anything. It could be your processing speed is low, your memory is off, you don't have good attentional resources. Sometimes that translates into attentional uh, issues like ADHD or ADD. I have word finding troubles. All these things are cognitive issues or cognitive topics. And so as it applies to us, our clients are in the real world using their brains, and so are we. And so we need to empower them to be able to train these processes so that they can be out in the world and be successful. Think of functional training, not just for the body, but for the brain. How do they then be successful in the real world while Things like cognitive decline and the negative effects from every day are taking place. Who, none of you in here are very old, but who has felt crappy because they didn't get sleep, they didn't eat well, they didn't exercise, they had too much screen time, you had too much stress, you didn't have a lot of social support, you have some genetic predisposition for something. Raise your hand if this applies to you, right? Has it been addressed in the personal trainer and health coaching framework yet? Sort of. We know that exercise and nutrition helps with those things, but maybe we haven't addressed it from that perspective. Does this make sense? And so this is why it's important to understand cognition. The next thing I want to bring up is a term called executive functioning. And executive functioning is a term uh, you guys need to be familiar with simply because if we're going to create this conversation, we need to have a bridge of the terminology between the practical aspects of what we do and the research. And what comes up in the research continuously is this term executive functioning. And it includes a lot of the stuff I already talked about, but it includes other things like activation, which if we think of muscle activation, is the ability for that muscle to turn on and off at the right times, right? And now that's really important, but mental activation is I'm awake, I should be alert. I'm, it's time for me to go to sleep, I should be sleepy. I have a presentation to give, I should be on point, right? I'm communicating with an individual, I shouldn't be slurring my speech, or I should be, I should be exercising <coughs> empathy. That depends on activation. Focus. Can you focus and pay attention at the task at hand? Productivity. This is a huge topic. Everywhere you look, are you productive enough? Five productivity hacks for blah, blah, blah. Drink butter in your coffee for more productivity. This stuff is everywhere, right? Effort. How much effort do I give and why? Who has felt tired at the end of the day? Okay. Think about the, the things you do as spending cognitive calories. How many cognitive calories do you spend on what and why? Are you effective at managing your cognitive calories? Because mental fatigue and neural fatigue is a very real thing. It has an effect on physical fatigue. But how great would it, could it be if we could program our day and our workouts so that we're considering effort and activation of mind? We can literally hack the brain to manage energy levels to be where we want, when we want. That would be really, really nice. It doesn't take crazy supplements or a crazy technology or a crazy miracle-based interaction to be able to get that, we just need to understand what dictates it 
how to manipulate it, and how that affects us as individuals. Then we have emotions. Emotions are pretty important. They're pretty damn relevant, right? How great could it be if we had the individual tool sets and the uh, coaching skill sets to be able to help people with emotional regulation? A lot of people drop off of training programs because of emotional, lack of emotional regulation or a lack of behavioral adherence. If you understand this and you can predict it and you can coach your client to prepare for that type of scenario, that's a huge thing because then you're keeping them active for their entire life, right? You may not be their only trainer, but you've empowered them with the tools to navigate health and fitness across the lifespan. And most trainers don't engage that conversation of regulating emotions Sometimes we get into motivation and positive affect and having fun so that they have that dopamine response. We talked about that already. But strictly learning how to regulate emotions is a huge part of cognitive function. And then of course we have memory. There's tons of different types. There's immediate recall. There's, uh, there's long-term recall. There's semantic processing. There's all these different types of memory and that's really important. We'll talk about.